If you were stuck on a desert island with some bottles and tubing, could you make a chest drain system? If there was an unexplainable suction outlet, do you know when to connect a chest drain to suction? My name is Ken Hoffman. I'm an intensivist at the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. In this video, we will be discussing how a three-chamber chest drain system works and when a chest drain should be connected to suction. This video is supported by the Australian and New Zealand Intensive Care Foundation. There is a link to their website in the description below. Chest drains are inserted when there is air or fluid in the pleural space that needs to be drained. The simplest form of chest drain is a single chamber chest drain with an underwater seal. This type of drain is used when there is a pneumothorax to allow air in the pleural space to leave whilst preventing air from going back into the pleural space during inspiration. Generally, Around 2 to 3 centimetres of water will allow air to leave whilst preventing movement of air back into the pleural space. A major benefit of an underwater seal is that there is visual confirmation when there is air leaving the pleural space in the form of bubbles. Underwater seal drains need to stay below the level of the patient's chest to make sure fluid doesn't get sucked back into the pleural space. For this reason, they may be clamped temporarily if they need to be elevated during patient repositioning. Always double check the drain has been unclamped after repositioning or transport because of the risk of tension pneumothorax with a clamped chest drain. In patients with a pneumothorax who are able to mobilise or are being transported, a Heimlich valve can be used instead. This is a one-way valve that allows air to leave the pleural space whilst preventing airflow in the opposite direction. The Heimlich valve avoids the problem of the underwater seal chamber tipping over and allowing air back into the pleural space. The problem with a single chamber chest drain is that any fluid that drains into the chamber will raise the level of the underwater seal, making it progressively harder for a pneumothorax to drain. To fix this problem, a fluid collection chamber can be added prior to the underwater seal chamber. This allows fluid to drain freely and be measured in a separate chamber from the underwater seal. A limitation of a two-chamber system is that it becomes less efficient at draining a pneumothorax as there is a large volume of compressible gas prior to the underwater seal. This can be overcome by the addition of suction to the system. This brings us to the three-chamber chest drain. This adds a third chamber which attaches to wall suction and has a pressure regulator that allows setting of a desired suction pressure. This system allows drainage of pleural fluid and efficient drainage of a pneumothorax with an adjustable level of suction. Modern three-chamber drainage systems have replaced the third underwater suction chamber with a dry suction chamber and bellows. The suction pressure comes set at minus 20 centimetres of water and can be changed from minus 10 to minus 40 centimetres of water. Movement of the bellows with negative pressure confirms that the suction system is working. Whilst a dry suction chamber is safer, the chest drain system still needs to stay upright due to the fluid in the underwater seal chamber. If the suction is turned off, the suction tubing should be removed from the chest drain system. Otherwise, the system is closed and won't allow drainage of air from the pleural space. Additional features of a modern chest drain system include a higher positive pressure release valve in case of tension pneumothorax and a manual negative pressure vent when changing from a high level of suction to a lower level of suction. When documenting chest drains, we should record if they swing or bubble. If the drain is bubbling, then there is either an air leak from the pleural space or a leak somewhere in the tube connections. The bubbling is described as intermittent or continuous depending on the volume of air that is coming out. Some drains feature a graduated air leak monitor in the underwater sealed chamber. This allows a numerical value to be assigned based on the severity of air leak from one to five. A swinging drain describes movement of fluid with the respiratory cycle either in the drainage tubing or in the underwater seal chamber. During inspiration, fluid moves towards a spontaneously breathing patient due to negative pressure in the pleural space 
and away from a patient on positive pressure ventilation due to an increase in intrathoracic pressure during inspiration. A swinging drain indicates that there is a patent connection to the pressure changes that are occurring in the pleural space with ventilation. If the drain doesn't swing, either the lung has re-expanded and is occluding the drainage holes, or there may be a blockage, kink or displacement of the chest drain. Suction is used to assist with draining air from the pleural space. In awake patients who can cough, suction is rarely required as the intrathoracic pressure they can generate is higher than the suction values used. In ICU, for sedated patients on positive pressure ventilation, suction is commonly applied at negative 20 centimetres of water until bubbling in the underwater seal has stopped and the pneumothorax has resolved on chest x-ray. Once this has occurred, suction is no longer required. In summary, chest drain systems used in ICU function as a three-chamber chest drain system, but use a dry suction chamber. This system allows drainage of air and fluid from the pleural space and an adjustable level of suction. Suction is applied to assist with draining a pneumothorax and is routinely used in patients on mechanical ventilation, but is rarely required in patients who are spontaneously breathing and are able to cough. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.